Homework 19, Basic Principles of Hypothesis Testing, Video 2, Types of Test. In the previous video, we introduced what a hypothesis was, and we introduced the two types of hypotheses. Null hypothesis, which is the claim that a population parameter is equal to a value, and the corresponding alternative hypothesis, which essentially contradicts the null hypothesis by saying that the parameter is greater than, less than, or not equal to what the null hypothesis claims the parameter is equal to. There are two types, excuse me, there are three types of tests that we're going to run across. Um, but it's worth saying that a hypothesis test will always follow the same steps. One of those steps you'll have to make a decision. And when you make that decision, it's based on the type of test it is. There are three types of test. There's a left tail test, a right tail test, and a two tail test. A left tail test is when the alternative hypothesis, H1, claims a parameter is less than what the null hypothesis claims. For example, there are three pairs of hypotheses from the first video. One of them would be a left tail test. Can you see which one it would be? Is it the hypotheses about the mean, the proportion, or the standard deviation? Well, a left tail test is when the null claims a parameter is less than. So all you're looking for is a less than symbol in the, in the alternative hypothesis. I think I just said null. Let me say that again. A left tail test is when the alternative hypothesis claims a parameter is less than what the null claims. In the first pair of hypotheses over here, the alternative hypothesis H1 is claiming that the mean is less than 37.5, which is what the null claims the mean is equal to. Because the alternative has less than, this would be a left tail test. It's going to be crucial that you can identify the correct type of test. That one's easy to remember because of alliteration. Left tail and less than both start with L. Left, less. By contrast, a right tail test is when the alternative hypothesis H1 claims a parameter is greater than what the null hypothesis claims. So of the remaining pairs of hypotheses, which one would be a right tail test? Well, the one whose alternative claims that a parameter is greater than a value is this one. This alternative hypothesis is claiming that the population standard deviation is greater than 1.2 in contrast to the null claiming that it's equal to 1.2. So greater than in the alternative hypothesis is a right tail test. Was I really about to circle the phrase right tail test before I wrote the phrase right tail test? That's weird. The third type of test is called a two tail test. And a two tail test occurs when the alternative hypothesis claims a parameter is different from what the null hypothesis claims. Different from is synonymous with not equal to. So anytime the alternative hypothesis contains the not equal to sign, it is a two-tail test. So the center pair of hypotheses here, here I go again trying to circle something before I write it, is a two-tail test. Now you might be wondering, what do I mean left tail, right tail, or two-tail? Well, I'll show you. I know I have a red marker here somewhere. I don't really want to stop and start the video over. I've already gone this far into it. I've got one red marker left. Let's hope it works. A left tail, the left tail, right tail, and two tail test are referring to the tails under a bell curve. So let me kind of explain why they are what they are. Recall in a normal distribution, the mean of a distribution occurs in the center of the bell curve. So if we were looking at the sampling distribution of, of uh, sample means, their average, which equals mu, recall that the average of all the sample means is equal to the population mean. The average of all these in the middle would just match the mu. So 37.5 would go in the middle. If somebody is claiming 
that a population's mean is 37.5. This is what they're saying about the bell curve. Now, if you take a sample from this population and calculate its mean, it will most likely not be equal to 37.5 because samples very rarely perfectly match what the population measures. However, it's okay if the mean comes out a little bit different. That's just the nature of sampling. However, if the population mean really is less than 37.5, then chances are our sample mean would be somewhere to the left of this. Now, it's okay if it's just a little bit to the left. Like, if we take a sample and get a mean of 37.0, I'm not too worried. That's pretty close to what we're claiming about the population. And we're blaming the difference on the fact that it's just the sample that we picked. However, if we pick a sample mean whose average is too far to the left, let's say way over here at 30, what's the probability of picking a sample out of this population and its mean being 30? Well, pretty small, depending upon the sample size and the population standard deviation. But my point is, if we pick a sample and it strays too far to the left, then we may have evidence that the claim about this is incorrect because it's not very likely, it's unlikely that it would go too far to the, to the left. So what we're saying here is, in order to reject this null hypothesis, and accept in its place the alternative hypothesis, we would need a sample that is far enough to the left, far enough, who, far enough to the left such that its sample mean is less than enough from 37.5. That phrase sounded funny. So the evidence that we're seeking to support the alternative hypothesis in place of the null hypothesis would live to the left, hence, a left tail test. For a right tail test, it's the same thing. For a right tail test, and we'll have to look down here for it, if we were claiming that the center was 1.2 of this bell curve for the standard deviations of the samples, and somebody said, no, 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 I think the sample stand the population standard deviation is much greater than that. If we took a sample and its standard deviation landed way over here. Now, I don't know what number that would be. Let's just say that it's way over there. Then the probability of it landing over there is pretty small. It's an unlikely event under the assumption that this is the correct center of the bell curve. So the evidence that would support this alternative hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis would live to the right, and hence it's a right tail test. For a two tail test, when we're claiming that it's different, we don't care which side it's on. For a two-tailed test, now let's take the proportion example with 0.75 in the middle. If we pick a sample from this population and the sample proportion is different than this, that's to be expected. It can differ a little bit. It can be a little bit less than. It can be a little bit greater than. But it can't be too far away. Because in order for a sample to land way over here, way over here, that's very unlikely, because the further out you go, the smaller these areas get. In fact, remember that uh, an event is considered unlikely if its probability is less than 5%. So, for example, if we cut off a 5% tail here and a sample landed over there, that was highly unlikely, meaning that this is probably incorrect. Or, if we cut off 5% over here and a sample's proportion landed way over there, I'm sorry, this was standard deviation, then that was highly unlikely because anything that's 5% or less chance to happen is, unlike, is an unlikely event. But if it's a two-tailed test, because the alternative says not equal, it's not saying left or right, it's saying either. So I can have evidence to contradict this claim that it's not equal to 0.75 by looking on either side. That's kind of the reason why a two-tailed test is associated with, with uh, not equal to, a right tail test is associated with greater than, and a left tail test is associated with less than. Now, if you got everything that I just said, I'm impressed. If you kind of got it, that's okay. With practice, it would make more sense. But if it totally blew your mind, then here's what you need to know. 
If your alternative says less than, it's a left tail test. At some point, we're going to shade in the left tail. If your alternative says greater than, it's a right tail test. At some point, we're going to shade in a right tail. And if your alternative says not equal to, it's a two tail test. At some point, we're going to shade in two tail. So in the alternative, less than is left tail, greater than is right tail, not equal to is two tail.